Hi, singers. Welcome to episode 103 of Voice Lessons to the World. Today, I'm joining you from beautiful Alexandria, Virginia, where I'm on tour with the Bacon Brothers. Pretty much every Earthling knows Kevin Bacon, the actor. In fact, you're at least six degrees away from Kevin at all times. But not everyone knows that Kevin and his brother Michael Bacon have been professional musicians for over 30 years. I've been working with Kevin and Michael as their vocal coach for some time. And let me tell you, these guys totally rock. Kevin and Michael formed the Bacon Brothers in 1995. Since then, they've released numerous albums, have done several tours, and have played some of the most iconic venues in the entire country. They've got as much professional music experience as you can find. And today, they're going to share their wisdom with us. So let's head to the theater and meet the guys. So I'm here with the Bacon Brothers, and uh, we're in Alexandria on tour. And uh, before we uh, get started, um, just t if you could talk a little bit about the band. Been together since uh, 95, done a lot of albums, a lot of tours. Um, how did it all get started? Well, Kevin and I always played music together when we were kids. Uh, I'm nine years older, so I kind of taught him how to play the guitar. Yeah. And he started writing songs at a very early age and would sing them to me. And I would write the chords and help him get it into, you know, song form. Mm -hmm. And then we, as we developed, we started uh, writing songs for um, reasons uh, to get someone to record it, to, you know, cash in on a fad. Mm -hmm. um, later on, when Kevin was doing movies, we would write the songs for his movies. And uh, when we put the band together 25 years ago, we sort of had to change our focus and become more... Uh, internal songwriters, yeah. um, just because I think that if people pay a lot of money to come out and see you play, you got to sort of you know reveal yourself. I think that's part of the at least in our concept. Yeah, gotcha. What's probably the hardest part about being on tour? Would you say? For me, uh, it's it's the waiting. Uh -huh. uh, you know, there's a long, long. You you. you I mean, there's a sound check, um, but the show is you know an hour and a half, two hours long, and. Um, there's a long time spent just kind of wandering around the backstage or sitting in the hotel room. And at first that sounds like it's kind of nice because, you know, if you're really busy like we are, there's not, no pressure to keep, you know, working all the time. Right. But after a while, it's just, I, I think that's the hardest part. Yeah. Well, that's what they say about film, too, is, you know, it's hurry up and wait. You know, it, it's interesting. They do say that about film. Um, and it is a very, very different kind of energy, though, because... W when you're doing a, a, a show, you know that the show is going to happen at, at 8.30 and you know how long it's going to last. Yeah. When you're doing a film, the day is, is, is much longer. I mean, you're, you're, you're at work for a, a, at least 12 hours, usually, right. and you never know when, it's gonna ha when your energy is going to have to come up. So it's, 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 it's a different kind of, um, it's a different kind of uh, energy skill, I think. Gotcha. Michael, you have the hardest part about being on tour for you? Oh, definitely the vocals. Okay. Without a doubt. Um, we're a songwriter band, and um, if you wake up in the morning and your throat doesn't feel good, and uh, it puts a pall over everything. So um, I think that you need to find a vocal technique that actually makes you stronger yeah. in that process. And uh, it took me a long time to find that. And I, I really, you know, if you're with a singing teacher and you're not getting stronger, you got to find another technique. Fair because be, or you're going to push. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of energy, but there's a way to do that without hurting yourself. Now I've gotten the great uh, pleasure to work with both of you on your voices, and uh, is that what brought you to seek vocal coaching? Is the difficulties of tour, or was it something else? Oh, it's definitely the, you know, I mean, you know, I want to be as good a singer as I can, but yeah. when I'm singing, I'm generally out with the band, and sometimes, you know, you get tired. Sometimes it's two shows a night, um, and you just your your voice cannot let you down. To me, it was it was also the, uh, an element of you know sometimes I 
I feel like singing is so elusive. You'll have a you'll have a, a night where things feel really good and like certain um, licks are popping out and 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 you feel like things are more in tune than others and and uh, you know you you feel strong and you feel connected to the audience and and then all of a sudden you, that that goes away for the next night and you kind of go what what happened you know what happened why did what how how come I'm just going back to singing this song um, the way the, you know the old way yeah. and and I think that it's always always trying to look for an answer to that it's been like a big part of what has made me want to uh, get vocal training gotcha. and when it's working I'm not looking for larynxes or cricothyroid muscles things like that what would you describe why it's working for you I'd say for me honestly um, it's almost I want to feel like I'm a li in a little bit of a transcendent kind of thing, where I'm not thinking about the voice, where I'm not stepping back from myself and, and looking at myself, where I'm really like emotionally connected to the song and emotionally connected to the audience and, and, and musically connected to um, the band. And um, again, I feel the same thing about acting. You know, you can do, you know, um, 15 takes of the same, you know, the same line, the same scene, the same moment, and all of a sudden you do one and you go, okay, I was actually walking in those shoes for that moment. I wasn't me, and I wasn't outside looking at myself saying, mm, we could have done, done that better. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, do you have a, a feeling or something that you do or think about when everything's working for your voice on stage? Well, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm still in process. Um, are we, you know, music is the type of thing you never really get there. You're sure. aspiring to get to some place. But um, what I'm finding now that my voice is responding to what I feel emotionally, yeah. um, I'll think, well, I'm going to sing this, this line a certain way because I want it to be very breathy and gentle. And now I can sort of trust that I'm going to be able to do that. Yeah. And I think one of the things that, you know, Kevin mentioned is consistency. Because you don't want to have a good night and a bad night. You want every night to be good because people pay a lot of money to hear you and you just you want to just hit a home run every night. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, very hard place to get to. And I have, I have to say it, it's taken me 40 years. So. <laughs> that's kind of pathetic, but <laughs> it really has. Well, I care about vocal technique more than anybody that you can find, but I'll say that when you get on stage, you want to be able to forget. Yes. Kind of absolutely. what Kevin was saying. You really want to be right there present with the you know, emotion of the song, yeah. what you're doing. And if you have doubts about your voice, then you'll never get there. Yeah. You gotta feel completely confident about it. Yeah. And we have lots of uh, viewers and singers that are wanting to go out on tour, or maybe they're just starting to go out on tour. Do you have any uh, tips or advice for those people that are getting started? Get the right teacher. <laughs> I really, I mean, I, you know, I'm not blowing smoke. It, it's, it's, it's really important. Yeah. And, as someone who never found the right teacher and spent a lot of time. I mean, Kevin and I have put in a lot of time into yeah. vocalizing. Yeah. Uh, hours and hours and hours and hours and many, many different kinds of teachers. I also think that, you know, you, uh, you know, in a, in a certain way you have to think of, of your um, voice as, as part of this bigger kind of instrument and that you have to take care of your entire being, um, you know get enough rest if, if possible and, and, and try to eat well and, you know, uh, just try to kind of um, take care of yourself and, and, you know, get some exercise and, and um, just all, all those things that people say about just getting through the day, you know, drink plenty of water and, you know, I, I, I find that um, you, when you combine the uh, physicality of going Oftentimes, like we do, sleeping on the bus at night, which is not, which is not really a preferential place to sleep, and um, then you know having almost never being able to eat food that you've actually prepared for yourself, um, staying up much later than that maybe than you than you have in the past. All these things really can really, I mean, it's it's such a cliche, but they can really take a, a toll yeah. on on you. I mean, if you're if you're 25, I guess it's probably you know easier. Um, but but uh, so I try to I try to really keep that um, in mind, just because I feel like it's. And then you add to that the 
uh, the stress of wanting the show to be good and having a good night or having a bad night or you know um, you know you uh, you get a call from your manager and says uh, you guys aren't selling any tickets and you know you gotta we gotta figure out a way to push the show and you know, stuff like that. I would add having a great band uh, <laughs> that you can really rely on yeah. mm -hmm. and a great crew. Yeah, and it makes the whole thing real. I mean, it's a great. It's it's like a um, traveling circus, really. I mean, mm -hmm. the amount of gear that they. I mean, look at all this gear that has got to be put away this evening. I mean, tomorrow yeah. night and yeah. put back in the trailer and then unpacked and. Uh, the hotels, and you know, you get to the hotel, and the rooms aren't ready. I mean, it's it's just it's a it's kind of a nightmare. But if you have really good people, it, it at least for us feels smooth. Yeah, cool. Which is which is great. With the voice sometimes taking a little wear and tear, is there stuff that you do a vocal warm up? Anything that maybe we've worked on together that you go back to, that you rely on, that you maybe practice beforehand? On on this tour. What I what I've done is um, w like like worked at least uh, starting probably about I don't know I'd say maybe three weeks or or a month before we left I would work um, on your lessons probably an hour or an hour and a half a day every day Good. Um, and then once uh, we got out on tour. I stopped and just really um, concentrated on the show. And sometimes I'll do a little bit of a warm up, and, so, and we do a warm up sometimes just just uh, in the dressing room, and a, and often uh, a sound check I think is a really good kind of vocal warm up. I find that sometimes during sound check I'll I'll try to sing the song. It's 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 a good chance to uh, vocalize the song without you know absolutely slamming it in the way that I'm I'm planning to. You know, in the, in in the show. Yeah. I mean, even if I don't even plan to do that, it's right, like right. people, you know, people. We often ask each other, "Well, are you playing your guitar at stage volume? Are you playing the drums at stage volume?" Because everybody kind of holds back a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, you can't help but just the energy of the audience and stuff. And I think that's kind of the same thing with uh, with the vocals, and which means that you um, get a chance to warm it up. Yeah. Feels like without you know putting it out there. Um, yeah, I would have to highly agree with that personally. That the preparation is more important than the vocalizing beforehand. Because actually you don't want to over warm up your voice, I find. You know, typically five or 10 minutes should be enough, but that prep on your technique before the tour even starts, mm -hmm. which you did, you know, that's I think what's the most important. I also find that it's, um, if possible, and it's not always possible, to keep the amount of um, conversation um, light during the day. Yeah. And you know that's a crazy thing to say because you know how are you going to not talk that much? But you know if 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 you do a show and dressing room gets really crowded after the show and the uh, the volume starts to go and you get into a you know kind of a long conversation, that's when I I find that I'm a little bit weaker the next day. Mm. Not from the show. Yeah. It's from the it's from the yakking you know yeah. afterwards. Yeah. I think I think my point of view in that is I used to think of these vocal exercises that you did every time. Right. And you wouldn't be able to sing if you didn't do that. And now, I, I really think I probably do 10, 15 minutes, not a whole lesson. Not so much to warm my voice up, but to reinforce what it is I'm doing now that I'm able to sing night after night without getting a sore throat. Mm. Yeah, so you sort of mentioned that you'd uh, taken 40 years to uh, find the right path. What is it about what we've done that you'd say is helping you find that? I think if I can say one thing, it would be a lot of voice teachers, it becomes a spiritual thing mm -hmm. and do what I say and magically think of this and your technique is much more technique. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really worked for me. Gotcha. Here's where the sound is. Here's how you make it low. Here's, mm -hmm. And um, I thought singing was shouting out. I thought that's how you communicated people by shouting out. Right, right. And the way that I've protected myself on the road is that it comes from a, a deeper place. Yeah. And as long as I'm there, I can push against it mm. uh, as hard as I want to without any bad results. Awesome. So I think that's the thing. And also, um, we, you, you'll say, well, that's an E flat. Uh, and well, that's an E, that's an F. And a lot of singing teachers don't want you to think of what the notes are, gotcha. but th that doesn't yeah. work for me because 
I know what an E feels like, and I know what I have to do to get it right. Gotcha. And it also is my ceiling, and I'm hoping to raise the ceiling higher. Yeah. In the meantime, now my E's come in, as you once said, uh, like money. Yeah. Every night. Yeah. Every night. <laughs> and that's what consistency is, and that's what builds confidence and the awesome. ability to... to uh, put a song across emotionally. Definitely. The technique definitely breeds the confidence, yeah. So for you, it's been getting away from more imagery and things like that and mm. actually knowing the mechanics right. of the instrument. Yeah, I'm not a dummy. I can actually do yeah. it, and I don't need to have, you know, dreamy things and imagining things right. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's just like your guitar. You don't think of a image and then play your guitar. Right. You want to know what's that scale, how do I play that chord? It takes a lot of work. It's, yep. You know, technique is a very, you know, time-consuming and, and effortful uh, endeavor. Yeah, it's your instrument. Yep. Kevin, is anything that you've felt that's been working for you? I think that your ability to uh, just um, say, you got this, mm. has been huge, yeah. you know, because I think that um, a lot of times, and you know, I've, I've, I've had a a few singing teachers and I've also had a lot of um, acting teachers and and directors too which which are not really um, teachers but you sort of sometimes frame them in your mind as uh, that that they should be mm. and a lot of it starts from a point of view of okay we got a lot of work to do you know or uh, all right let's start for let's still we'll, we'll just start with you know what I mean there's a there's a kind of um, negativity yeah. uh, a, a position of negativity that 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 sometimes people start from because I think that it's a natural instinct so that it makes you feel like your job is more important and you know gotcha. but from the first time we started working together you were like oh no you 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 sing better than you think you sing yeah you know, yep. and and that just that to me was like huge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys have been pros for a long time. There's so much more going right for you than wrong. Mm -hmm. But uh, any true professional still wants to get better, mm -hmm. better, better. Absolutely. So you know, that's really to me what we've done is just added the nuances and the technical bells and whistles to take it to the next level. It's not like you have to, you know, scrap it and you know, start from scratch. It's just, it's just tweaking it to make it even that more artistic. Yeah, it's funny. I know, you know, in your, in your, in your uh, classes, you have those, uh, that, that last bit of encouragement. Yeah. And when I first started looking at that, I was like, well, I don't need to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but now I actually watch them because they're kind of, Interesting yeah. and helpful yeah. and good and and, cool. and uh, sweet and yeah. and it's nice and I think to, I think about that you know I think about the fact that there's a lot of people that you will never meet yeah. and they're getting this you know encouragement from you it's it's a, it's, a, it's a cool yeah. thing it's really, it's awesome. really good yeah I mean with the voice it's it's always it's always us you know that's where it's different from the guitar. You know, you can master the guitar, but ultimately the guitar is not you. Mm -hmm. When you sing, that's your instrument, and it's yeah. also you. Yeah. And so you have to believe in your instrument. You have to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And if there's too much negativity attached to that, the voice doesn't work as well. Right, which is why standing up in front of people and singing and uh, playing an instrument, or just especially singing, is one of the hardest, most vulnerable things you can do. Mm. In, uh, in the, in the um, Stanislavski and uh, um, uh, Lee Strasberg uh, method yeah. technique, there's, a, there's the singing exercise. Mm -hmm. And I've seen where you basically stand up, you can pick any song, it could be Happy Birthday, and you basically stand in front of the, the, the class and start on just the first note and just sing it and go to the next note. And I have seen people completely wow. dissolve mm -hmm. into <laughs> blubbering, you know, just <laughs> a pile of emotion wow. on the stage, time after time after time, when I was in acting school and studying that technique. And it made me realize that that is a, you know, it's a very powerful thing to be able to, to uh, and, and, and a terrifying thing to be able there and stand there and open your mouth, much more, much more frightening than um, saying a line.
For voice lessons or Skype lessons with the NYVC staff, visit us at NewYorkVocalCoaching.com. If you'd like a vocal course that you can do at home, check out the Voice Lessons to the World Vocal Course. This 12-part program takes you on a singing journey from beginner to master level vocal exercises. You can find it at VoiceLessonsToTheWorld.com. Or if you'd like free vocal tips sent to you each day, sign up at DailyVocalTips.com. And now, here's Justin with this week's Vocal Benediction. Whew. Well, that was tons of fun, and we learned so much about touring life and being a pro musician. Thanks again to the Bacon Brothers for sharing your wisdom and experience with singers everywhere. <laughs>